Shias do not have a unique opinion towards the companions of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his purified progeny based on the relative authenticity and interpretations of the, tra of the transmitted traditions some arrive at different conclusions which tradition is uh, which tradition is more authentic and which has the correct meaning is debatable however tonight's episode is an attempt to provide what is considered to be the typical Quranic position in this regard respected viewers brothers and sisters in Islam assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome to the ninth episode of life from Karbala Ramadan series with me your host Ahmad Ali this very controversial topic will be examined by my dear guest and my esteemed guest who has joined me once again in tonight's episode Sayyid Hussain al qazwini so I'll talk to him. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Alaykum How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, ajma'in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grace in your reward. Inshallah. Uh, especially during the month of Ramadan. Uh, Sayyidna, as Shia, we divide the companions of Prophet Muhammad into three categories. Number one, we have uh, the companions who are obedient and they, they followed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Holy Prophet to every letter, not every word, to every letter to that extent and gave everything they have for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the Prophet, and for the sake of Islam, and were always supportive of the Prophet. Uh, number two, we have those who were Muslim, but not sincere in their acts. In the third category, we have those who became uh, apostates after the Prophet's death, uh, after the Prophet's demise. However, some believe that all of the companions were perfect, pious, righteous, noble, and all are in heaven. While others believe that all companions were doomed in hell, uh, oppressive, and evil. Now, how does the Quran view Sahaba? Objectively, unbiasedly, how, how does the Quran view that? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. The topic of uh, the Sahaba, mm -hmm and their virtue or their vice or their vices it's one of those topics that has been debated for centuries mm -hmm. and i could say that um, many battles were shed because of this topic because of this topic many up people were now. up until now many people were killed many people were persecuted mm -hmm. on both sides yes whether you say that uh, the Sahaba were bad mm -hmm. or you say that all, all of the Sahaba were good this this has always been a controversial topic yes. the problem is I think is that many of our research papers or our books or our lectures or our discussions are not objective mm -hmm. they're not objective they are very much biased many many Sunni scholars namely Salafi scholars yes. when they begin talking about uh, Sahaba immediately they feel they have to take the position the defensive position mm -hmm. Sahaba are a red line I will defend them no matter what mm -hmm. even if I see even if history proves to me that some of them drank and committed adultery and killed I'm, st I'll, I'm still going to defend them Wow. Not just the Sahaba, but the Tabi'een, the second generation. Yes. You have the first generation, which are the Sahaba, mm -hmm. the first generation of Muslims. The second generation are the Tabi'een, which would include in the th those who follow in the footsteps, which would include people like Yazid. Wow. There are some people that, that are willing to defend Yazid. Wow. On the other hand, you have some that uh, will come and condemn all of the Sahaba, all of the Sahaba. They will say all of the Sahaba after the Prophet, they, uh, they became apostates. They left Islam. They abandoned Islam. They were oppressive to the family of Rasulullah and so on and so forth. So we have two extremes, two extremes. And I think both groups are not being objective. Mm -hmm. They're not being, they're being biased. Yes. And I believe that the best way to, to develop a theory mm -hmm and to reach the truth is to see what the Quran says. Definitely, and that's the best solution. And one of the topics that the Quran discusses thoroughly is the topic of the Sahaba. 
Because they were there with Rasulullah sallallahu yes. alayhi wa Many verses were addressing them, were uh, mentioning, a lot of verses mentioned the qualities mm-hmm. of the Sahaba. Why don't we come to the Qur'an? Yes, definitely. And let the Qur'an be the best of judges. Mm-hmm. As with the previous topics, I won't mention any hadith from Al-Kafi or Bihar Al-Anwar because these narrations are good for me. Yeah. A person who doesn't accept Al-Kafi will not accept. And I won't bother bringing narrations from Bukhari and Muslim and others, even though I can. And there's plenty of narrations to bring Very from those true. books. Let's stick to the Qur'an. Let's stick to the Qur'an. Let's see what the Qur'an says. Mm-hmm. If you want to go into the Qur'an, I mean, there are several verses within the Holy Qur'an that praise the companions of the Holy Prophet. Take, for example, uh, chapter 48, verse 29, Surah Al-Fatih, uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises the companions due to their unity alongside the Holy Prophet, and He promises them forgiveness and great reward. Now, the question is, how do we interpret such verses? I mean, in the first part, it's good to keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in the first part of the verse, He says that all the companions are good. That means that they're pious, that, that they're righteous. The prostration mark is on their forehead due to their prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes. that, that's a good thing. Absolutely. Yet in the second part of the verse, we see... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making an exception minhum so how do we interpret these narrations or sorry these verses sure the verse that you just mentioned mm-hmm. in surah al-fatih verse 29 the last verse i believe the last verse mm-hmm. muhammadun rasulullah allahumma salli ala muhammad ala muhammad wal ladhina ma'ahu ashadda'u ala al-kuffar ruhama' ruhama' baynahum Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those that are with him, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ This is... Let's stop here. Some scholars, some Sunni scholars, and mainly Salafi scholars, mm-hmm. Salafist scholars, mm-hmm. will bring this verse. Mm-hmm. They say, you Shia, you curse the Sahaba, you degrade the Sahaba, you disrespect the Sahaba, yet the verse is saying, Muhammad and Rasulullah, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشَدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَارِ رُحَمَاءَ بَيْنَهُمْ تَرَاهُمْ رُكَّعًا سُجَّدًا يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَضْوَانًا All of these good virtues, they are, they are soft with the believers. They are tough with the non-believers. Uh, they prostrate, they perform sujood. They go after the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can see in their forehead signs of Sujood and prostration, their signs have been mentioned in the Torah and in the Injil. Mm-hmm. So, great group of people. How can you disrespect them? First of all, we don't disrespect anyone. We follow as Ahl Bayt. We give each person the value that that person deserves. Yes. We give each person the respect that that person deserves. Absolutely. We don't humiliate. Or disrespect. We give each person his own value. Mm-hmm. But let's be honest, some do disrespect a lot. Well, let's see when why? I s- why, why do they disrespect? <laughs> Definitely. Maybe it's not disrespect. Maybe, you know, when you call a janitor a janitor, is that disrespectful? No. You're calling him as he is. Why don't you call a doctor a janitor? Because a doctor is not a janitor. Definitely. He, he, he you know, he cures people. Mm-hmm. So if you call a janitor a janitor, you're not disrespecting the janitor. You're calling mm-hmm. him as he is. Now that's, that's, that's a different topic. Let's come to the verse. We don't mean any disrespect or humiliation. Mm-hmm. Let's see what the verse is trying to say. Okay. Muhammad Rasulullah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ أَشَدَّاءُ عَلَى الْكُفَّارِ رُحَمَاءَ بَيْنَهُمْ Number one, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Those who were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This ma'ahu Al-Ma'iyyah, to be with Rasulullah. There's two kinds of being. This is those who were with Rasulullah. What do we mean by they were with Rasulullah? There were some Jews in Medina. Hypocrites. There were hypocrites in Medina. Were they with Rasulullah? This with, this Ma'iyyah is a special kind of Ma'iyyah. That means those that were with Rasulullah day and night. 
during the good times and during the bad times, during hardships and during ease. They were with him whenever he wanted them. They would not abandon him. At the tough times, they stood with him. Mm -hmm. Who were they? In the battle of Uhud, we see that all of the Sahaba ran away, except five. Except five of them. Is this Muhammad Rasulullah walladheena ma'ahu? In the battle of Hunayn, they ran away. Rasulullah is in the middle of the battlefield. We'll, we'll mention a verse regarding that. Did he that get in injured in that battle? I don't know if he got injured or not, but he was in the front lines. Mm -hmm. They left Rasulullah. And this is one of the greatest sins. Definitely. By both Sunni and Shia scholars. Bo both schools of thought agree that leaving the battlefield is one of the greatest sins. Yes. Let alone leaving Rasulullah in the battlefield. Yes. Is this with Rasulullah? وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ I don't know if that means. Yes, the ones that were with Rasulullah all the time, we accept. They were great people. Like Ali ibn Abi Talib. But he was always with Rasulullah sallallahu But the verse is not saying day and night. It's huh. just ma'ahu. But this is what, it's, what is understood. Muhammad Rasulullah وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Muhammad the messenger, is the messenger of Allah. And those with him are such and such and such. Who? Who is the verse trying to talk about? Mm -hmm. Those loyal companions. It's not a broad term. Mm -hmm. This is one. Yes. Two, these are specific qualities. They are, they are soft with the believers. They are tough with the non-believers. These are general qualities. These are qualities. These are qualities. Uh, they're not general qualities, I'm sorry. They're specific qualities. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah had over a hundred thousand people that saw him. And the Sunni school of thought, they say that anyone who met or spoke to, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is a sahabi. Wow. That makes over a hundred thousand more, more, more. A minimum of a hundred thousand people Abu were part Sufyan, of the sahaba. Abu Sufyan spoke to the Prophet. Abu Sufyan, others. Do they all have this quality? Tarahum rukka and sujjad and yabtogun of ashadda'u ala al-kuffar Ruhamaa abaynahum They all have this quality? Mm -hmm. That's logically not possible for over a hundred thousand people to have these exact qualities? Impossible. Impossible. That's not logical. That's the verse is talking about a specific group. Not everyone. Mm -hmm. Plus, some of the sahaba, they were easy, they were soft with the believers and tough on the kuffar. On the contrary, we see the opposite. We see the opposite. We yeah. see that some of the Sahaba, they were tough on the believers. Read about Uthman ibn Affan and what he did with Ammar ibn Yasir. Yes. With Ammar ibn Yasir, he beat him. He beat him in a, in a specific spot. He almost killed him. This is a murawwaj al dhahab and inshallah, I plan on doing a biography on Uthman ibn Affan as I did on the life of Abu Bakr and Umar, Umar ibn Khattab. I'd yes. like to do a, a biography uh, on Uthman ibn Affan and mention, mention some of his deeds and actions. Yes. He was rough. What did he do with Abu Dhar yes. when he sent him to Ar-Rabadha? He punished him. He punished Abu Dhar. One of the greatest companions. One of the greatest companions. Is this Ruhama Abaynahum? Mm -hmm. He frowned and turned away. In one of my discussions in Muharram, I proved that this verse is regarding Uthman ibn Affan, not, not Rasulullah. While some believe that this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the verse, the, Al-A'ma is Ibn Umm Maktoum, a blind man. One of the companions of Rasulullah. Uthman frowned and he turned away. When the blind man came to him, is this Ruhama Abaynahum? So who, who is the verses talking about? All of the Sahaba? Some of the, the Sahaba, they definitely were not Ruhama Abaynahum. They, they were not merciful with, with the believers. Yeah. Do, do they, do, did all of them have this quality? The place of prostration is on their forehead. Did all of the Sahaba have this? Let's look. You know, I'm, 
I'm astonished to see some, they use this verse to say all of the Sahaba have this quality. Historically, look, how many of the Sahaba they had these qualities? See mahum fi wujuhim min athar sujood That you can see the place of prostration on their foreheads. Well, go look and then come and say this verse is talking about this person and that person and that person. Mm -hmm. The verse... The verse is not saying all of the Sahaba of Rasulullah had these qualities. Some of them, some of them had these qualities. That's fine. We accept. We accept that some of the Sahaba, plus, and then as you mentioned, there's an exception. Mm -hmm. The end of the verse is very important. I don't know why they don't read the end. They don't read the end of the verse. Wa'ad Allahu alladheena amanu wa amilu salihati minhum maghfiratan wa ajran azima. Allah has promised those who believe and, good de and done good deeds from them. That means not all of them believe. That means not all of them good, did good deeds. Some mm. of them did. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا That means some of them did not believe. Mm -hmm. Some of them did not do good deeds. مِنْهُمْ This is مِنْ تَبْعِيضِيَّةً Some of them some of them, those who believed and did good deeds from them, from the Sahaba, from those who were with Rasulullah, mm -hmm. Allah has promised them forgiveness and great reward. It's very clear, min, min hum. Yeah. This is one verse that our friends use mm -hmm. to say that all the prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with all the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. And this is a you know, a testimony that all the Sahaba are great. Another verse, possibly one of the one of the first verses that are used to try to justify mm -hmm. that all of the Sahaba are righteous, Udul, is this. Surah Al Hadid. Yes. Verse ten. Mm -hmm. They say that the verse is saying before the conquest there are some people that fought and spent money for the sake of Allah. That spent money for the sake of Allah and fought for the sake of Allah. Yes. And there were some that fought and spent money after the conquest. The verse is saying those who spent and fought before the conquest are better than the ones who fought and spent money after the conquest. Mm -hmm. Which conquest is this? Which conquest? There's, there's various opinions. Some say the conquest is Sulh al Hudaybiyyah, mm -hmm. Al Fatih, because the, the peace treaty at Hudaybiyyah was considered a conquest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Either that or the conquest of Mecca. The conquest of Mecca. The verse is trying to say that before the conquest, you know, Islam was still weak. Those who came and fought and spent and, you know, things didn't look so good for Islam. Those are better than the ones that came and fought and spent Later on. after the conquest when things were looking good for Islam. Yes. Right? You know, your friends, which friends are more loyal to you? Before reaching a big position or after reaching a big, big position? Definitely the ones who... Before, reach, right? Yes. Before you became a president, those friends who helped you reach that position, you're not going to forget them. Definitely because not. they were friends with you before you reached that big position. Yes. Not the ones that came to you now that you're president. Yes. They're less sincere. So the verse says, Those who spent and fought before the conquest are better than the ones that spent and fought after. However, but both groups, Allah has promised something good. So does that mean that both groups are in heaven? They say that. They say, they say that the verse is trying to say that Allah has has promised both groups mm -hmm. heaven. Mm -hmm. Do we need to take a break? Inshallah, we'll continue this uh, and see if all the prof, oh, sorry, all the companions uh, are pious and noble. But that's after the break, Sayyidina. So respected viewers, do stay tuned after the break. Uh, for we will inshallah prove uh, the nobility of the companions of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that's after the break stay tuned
Come back. Hope you inshallah enjoyed uh, the short break. Uh, but before the break, we talked about and discussed exa examples from the Holy Quran uh, regarding the companions of Prophet Muhammad uh, and regarding their nobility and uh, faithfulness towards the Prophet. Uh, back to the discussion with my dear guest, Sayyid Hussain. Welcome back, Habib Sayyidina. Thank you very much. Uh, before the break, we brought an example from uh, chapter 48, verse 29, and we said that not all the prophet, uh, not all the companions are included in this verse because we do see that also hypocrites, you know, attach themselves to the prophet. Yet no Muslim ever named or entitled those hypocrites as, you know, the people who are included in this verse. Uh, so we are moved on to a different verse, right. uh, which you were mentioning regarding uh, both the people or the companions who, you know, before the conquest of Islam uh, of, of Mecca or uh, the Treaty Hudaybiyah. of Hudaybiyah, are the same or they, they have the same reward as the people who followed after. So, if you continue, the verse was saying that those who spent and fought before the conquest, before mm -hmm. the Fath, have a greater reward than those that fought. After and spent, however, وَكُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ So one has more greater reward, yet both? Both Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised good things. Mm -hmm. They're both rewarded, but they're both, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both of them Allah has uh, promised good things. This group is better than that group, but both will be rewarded. Mm -hmm. وَكُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ They say, see, وَكُلًّا Allah has promised all of the Sahaba a good reward, meaning paradise yes. and Jannah. However, they are overlooking something very important. Are they? The verse doesn't say that everyone fought and everyone gave and spent money. But Some kullen, of the Sahaba, kullen. yes, kullen from those who spent and fought. But not all of, the ha all of the Sahaba spent and fought. Some of the Sahaba, they fought. Some of the Sahaba spent money. But if we look in history, you know, we, we can say not all, all of them, not all of them fought in, in all battles, but some did fight at battles. Yes. But those who fought and those who spent money before the conquest and after the conquest, Allah has promised both of these groups, وَكُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ but not all of the Sahaba spent money. Some mm -hmm. of them were poor. Not all of the Sahaba fought. Many yes. of them did not fight. Mm -hmm. Many of the Sahaba did not fight. Those who fought and those who spent money, كُلًّا وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْحُسْنَةِ Whoever fought and spent money, Allah has promised Perfect. a good reward. Or a good reward. Proof that not all of the Sahaba spent the same exact verse in the beginning. وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تُنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلِلَّهِ مِرَاتُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَا يَسْتَوِي مِنْكُمْ مَنْ أَنْفَقَ مَنْ قَبْلِكُمْ why, why do you not give and donate from your money? Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything mm -hmm. in the skirt and the, uh, in, on, the, uh, on the earth and in the skies. Allah is rebuking them. Why aren't you spending? Yes. This means that a great, great deal of Sahaba did not spend. They did not go into war. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're not willing to put their, risk their lives. They're not even willing to risk their wealth. So Allah is rebuking them. Mm -hmm. And then Allah says that some of you who spent before the conquest are better than those who spent after the conquest. However, both of you will be greatly rewarded. Yes. So not all those Sahaba. Mm -hmm. Before that, in verse number 7, this was verse number 10. In verse number 7, آمنوا بالله ورسوله وأنفقوا مما جعلكم مستخلفين فيه Again, Allah is ordering them to spend. He's rebuking them. It's as if you can tell some Sahaba were not willing to fight mm -hmm. nor give money. And so if you're not willing to fight, at least sponsor a soldier. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let someone else fight but sponsor him. Tell him, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of your family members. Go and fight. And I'll, I'll spend money on you. Some were neither willing to fight nor spend. Allah is rebuking them. Mm -hmm. This shows that it wasn't all of the Sahaba. Definitely not. It wasn't all the, it was some of the Sahaba that spent and fought. Yes. These people that have a great reward. Mm -hmm. We agree? Definitely. And we do see that in the narration. I mean, uh, these nights we commemorate the martyrdom of Lady Khadija. Naam, it's good to Allah. mention the narration. Um, that, that she spent. She spent everything. She spent more than anyone else did. <laughs> 
If in fact, I don't know if someone spent that much. Maqam al-Islam illa bi mali Khadija wa Saifi Ali. Or wa Saifi Ali. It was Khadija's money that got Islam uplifted. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning this. Tayyib. And another verse yes. that they use to, to say that, you know, all the Sahaba are great mm -hmm. is in Surah at verse 100. Yes. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ Right there, there's an exception. وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتَ الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزِ الْعَظِيمِ The verse, they use this verse to say that all of the Sahaba are what? Are great, are great they're pious. purified, they're noble, they're righteous. طيب. The verse is speaking about a handful of Sahaba, not all of them. A group of them, a fraction of them. Wasabiqun, yeah. al-awwalun, the early pioneers. Mm -hmm. Not all of the Sahaba. Asabiqun, al-awwalun, min al-muhajirin, wal-ansar. From the migrants, those who came from Mecca, and the helpers, al-ansar, from yes. Medina. Some of them. Yeah. The early pioneers of them. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِأَحْسَانِ And those who righteously followed in their footsteps. Righteously followed in their footsteps. Who followed righteously in the footsteps of those Sahaba? These are signs. We leave that to the to viewers to decide. Those who followed in the footsteps of the early Sahaba, those who sacrificed, those who left their homes, those who did not come to Islam for power, yes. for inner motives, they didn't have a hidden agenda. This mm -hmm. is what tabaruhum bi ihsan. Definitely. The early pioneers, they sacrificed everything for Islam. Yes. They didn't come to Islam for power. This is what tabaruhum bi ihsan. Those who, the righteous followers, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنهم. Allah is satisfied with them and they are satisfied with Allah. Mm -hmm. See? Another verse they mention. Surah Al-Fatih, verse 18. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الْشَجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَثْبَتَ وَأَثَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا Allah is pleased with the believers when they gave you allegiance under the tree. You say it was the Sahaba who gave allegiance under the tree. Our first question, was it all of the Sahaba or some of the Sahaba? It wasn't who? all of the Sahaba. First of all, it wasn't all of the Sahaba. It was some of the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. It was a handful of the Sahaba. Maybe a couple dozen. Not a handful. A couple dozen of the Sahaba. Not many of them. This is one. Second, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ The believers. The believers. Not the followers. Not just whoever was there. And we know from the Sahaba there were believers and they were non believers. Hypocrites. hypocrites as we shall see in a couple of minutes. Yes. There were hypocrites among the lines of the Sahaba. You cannot deny this. And this is in the Quran. And we shall see this in a little bit. Mm -hmm. المؤمنين, the believe Allah is pleased with the believers. Tell me which one of them were the believers. I'll accept. Furthermore, let's say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling all of the Sahaba believers. Even though this is not right, this is not a correct reading mm -hmm. of the verse. Let's say the verse is calling them all believers. If. When? 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 Allah is pleased with them when they gave you allegiance. This is not a please. Eternal please. An eternal please. That they pleased Allah forever. No, He was pleased with them when they performed this act. When your son. Does a good act, you're pleased. Doesn't mean you'll be pleased with him forever. 